All right, let's dive right in. Today we're looking at something uh, a little bit explosive. Oh, yeah. It's about Donald Trump and some things he said about what he'd do if he won the 2024 election, uh, specifically about special counsel Jack Smith. So this all comes from an article on Forbes.com from yesterday, October 24th. The title pretty much says it all. Trump will fire Jack Smith within two seconds if he wins 2024 election. Wow. So that's uh, pretty direct. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. That quote alone kind of sets off alarm bells, right? I mean, can a president actually just fire a special counsel like that? And what would happen if they did? Yeah, a lot of people are asking those questions, I think, to understand what's going on. We need to back up a bit and talk about who Jack Smith is and what he's investigating. OK, so break it down for us. Sure. So Jack Smith is the special counsel and he's leading not one, but TWO federal investigations that involve Trump. One is about efforts to overturn the 2020 election. And the other is about how White House documents were handled after Trump left office. So basically, Trump wants to fire the guy who's investigating him. That doesn't seem like a good look. No, it really puts a big question mark over the idea of a fair and impartial investigation. And legally, it's not quite as simple as Trump snapping his fingers and saying, you're fired. Right. There's got to be some kind of process. right? Right. Exactly. It's actually the attorney general who has the power to fire a special counsel. But couldn't Trump just appoint an attorney general who would do what he wanted? He could try. Yeah. We saw something similar with Robert Mueller, remember? He was special counsel investigating Russian interference in the 2016 election. Right, right. Trump thought about firing him, but there was a lot of pushback from both sides of the aisle, and he ended up backing down. So there are some guardrails in place to stop a president from just doing whatever they want. There are. Mm. But this article and... Some experts are suggesting that if Trump gets a second term, he might not be so hesitant to test those limits. It's a little unnerving to think about. I think it's a valid concern. Kamala Harris's campaign actually responded to Trump's comments. They called it proof that he thinks he's above the law. They're saying that if he gets a second term, it could be much more unstable and unhinged because those guardrails might not hold. So fewer checks on his power? That's Potentially, yeah. That's a scary thought. It is. And to make matters even more intense, Smith's team just filed some documents in the election interference case. It's got some pretty damning stuff about what Trump was doing after the 2020 election. Like what? Well, there's this quote in the article that is supposedly from Trump talking to his family after he lost. He said something like, it doesn't matter if you won or lost the election, you still have to fight like hell. Wow. It's powerful stuff. And the filing uses that quote to try to show what his mindset was at the time. I could see why they'd use that. Yeah. And then you've got the whole thing with him putting pressure on Mike Pence to try and overturn the election results and how he basically brushed off the fact that Pence had to be rushed to safety during the January 6th riot. It's not a good look. It paints a pretty disturbing picture. It does, if it's all true. It suggests that he was willing to go to pretty extreme lengths to hold on to power, even if it meant going against our democratic processes. And remember, Trump is facing 44 federal felony charges across both these cases. Right. And he keeps saying he didn't do anything wrong. Exactly. But the fact that we even have a special counsel investigating all of this shows how important it is to have someone independent looking into potential wrongdoing by a president, especially when we're heading into another election. It's all about making sure things are fair, right? No matter who's in charge. Exactly. That's the whole point of a special counsel. They're there to make sure that justice is pursued without any bias and that the investigation is shielded from political games. But there has been some pushback against Jack Smith and the investigations themselves. Really? Yeah. The Forbes article mentions that Republicans have been questioning whether Smith's appointment is even legitimate. And then there's the fact that one of the cases, the one about the documents, was actually thrown out by a judge that Trump appointed. Hold on. A Trump-appointed judge dismissed a case against Trump. That sounds... Yeah, it raises some eyebrows. Yeah. But the article also says that Smith's team is appealing that decision. So it's not over yet. The legal fight continues. So we've got a former president potentially running for office again while facing some very serious charges. And he's already said he'd fire the person investigating him if he wins. Then we've got this whole debate about whether the charges are even legitimate and a political landscape that feels like it's on the verge of breaking. It's... It's definitely a lot to unpack. A recipe for chaos, maybe? It has the potential to be, I think it's a situation that could have a serious impact, not just on the 2024 election, but on how people see our whole system of government and whether they trust it. So what's the bottom line here? What's at the heart of all this? The core issue is the balance of power. 
On one side, you've got a former president who's facing some very serious legal trouble. On the other side, you've got that same person potentially getting back the very power that could let him interfere with or even stop those charges from going forward. It sounds like something out of a movie. It does. But unfortunately, it's real life. And it forces us to ask some really tough questions. If someone under investigation can potentially control the investigation, what does that mean for justice? What does that say about whether the law applies equally to everyone, even the most powerful people? Those are some big questions. They are. And I don't think they're easy answers. No, I don't think so either. But they're questions that we need to be talking about as a country. We need to think critically about the systems that govern us and how we can make sure they can't be abused or manipulated. Absolutely. Uh, we need to make sure that those systems can hold up, even under pressure. One thing I noticed is that the article didn't really touch on what the public thinks about all this. Do we have any idea how people are reacting to what Trump said or to the potential consequences of all this? That's a good point. The Forbes article mostly focuses on the legal and political side of things. Mm. It doesn't really delve into public opinion. But considering how divided the country is, it's probably safe to say that people's reactions are going to fall along party lines. Which is yeah. kind of a bummer, honestly. It is. It's a sign of how polarized things have become. Yeah. It's almost like our democracy is being put through a stress test. That's a really interesting way to put it. A stress test for democracy. And the results of that test are going to have a big impact for years to come. So before we move on, I want to leave our listeners with something to think about. Imagine a president being investigated for serious crimes. How do we, as a nation, make sure that the investigation is truly fair and unbiased, regardless of who's president? That's a great question and a really important one. It comes down to strengthening those guardrails we talked about earlier, those checks and balances that are supposed to prevent any one person or branch of government from having too oh, much power? It's definitely a question with no easy answers. It isn't. Oh. But it's a question we can't afford to ignore. Absolutely. It really makes you think about how we protect those checks and balances, especially when we're talking about a president who might be facing criminal charges. Yeah. It makes me think about other big political scandals like Watergate with Nixon and those tapes. Were there similar guardrails back then? That's a great comparison. Watergate also had a special prosecutor. And in the end, it was the threat of impeachment and possible criminal charges that made Nixon resign. So the legal system acted as a check on presidential power, even though Nixon didn't actually go to trial. Exactly. And we can't forget the role that public opinion played in that. Mm -hmm. As more and more evidence came out, support for Nixon dropped and Congress had to do something. Which brings us back to why a well-informed public and a free press are so important. Couldn't agree more. The media has a huge responsibility to hold people in power accountable. They do that by shining a light on any wrongdoing and making sure the public knows what's going on. But it's also on each of us to be smart about the information we're getting, especially with all the stuff flying around on social media. It's a lot of noise to filter through. It is. We have to be able to cut through all that and figure out what's really true. But going back to those guardrails, mm. wouldn't the Trump victory basically mean those guardrails failed? That's a good question. It would be a huge test for them, that's for sure. If he wins and then actually does what he said about firing Jack Smith, it would set a pretty dangerous precedent. It could really mess with the balance of power and make people question whether the justice system can really be independent. It's like we'd be heading into uncharted territory, right? Yeah. What are some of the long-term consequences for the justice system if Trump actually did all this, not just for his case, but for everything that comes after? One big concern is that people would start losing trust in the justice system. If it looked like a president can just fire whoever is investigating them, people might think the whole system is rigged or that only the powerful get real justice. That's a pretty bleak thought. Losing faith in the very system that's supposed to uphold the law. It's a serious problem. And it could make people less likely to report crimes or cooperate with investigations because they wouldn't think anything would come of it. So it could actually hinder the whole system. Exactly. It's not just about Trump in these specific cases. It's about how justice works in our country moving forward. It's about the big picture. It is. And it brings up some fundamental questions about whether people are held accountable, whether the law applies to everyone, and whether our democratic institutions can really do their job. OK, I want to shift gears for a second and talk about something the article didn't really get into. What about the argument that all these investigations are politically motivated, that it's all just a witch hunt like Trump and his supporters say? We have to acknowledge that perspective, too. Trump and his supporters are saying that this is all a political hit job meant to keep him from getting back into power. 
They point to the timing of the investigations and the fact that the special counsel was appointed by a Democratic administration. It's true that politics and the law aren't always totally separate, right? Right. But the whole point of having a special counsel is to add a layer of independence to the investigation. Jack Smith in particular has a reputation for being tough, but fair. He's not known for playing political games. So it's more complicated than just saying it's all political. It is. There's a legal process happening, and we have to let that process play out. Mm. We need to look at the evidence and let the justice system do its job. We can't just jump to conclusions or assume we know everyone's motives. So ultimately, it'll be up to a jury to decide if Trump is guilty or not? That's right. A jury of his peers will be the ones weighing the evidence and making a decision, not politicians or talking heads on TV. It comes down to whether we believe in our justice system and whether we think it can handle this case fairly no matter what kind of political pressure there is. That's the question, isn't it? Do we believe in the system? Do we think it can withstand all this pressure and do what it's supposed to do? It's a question that each of us has to think about. But it's definitely something we can't ignore. It really makes you think, this whole situation, it's like we've never seen anything like this before. A president running for office again while he's facing charges and saying he'll fire the guy investigating him. It's Yeah, it's definitely uncharted territory. It shows how fragile things can be and how someone could take advantage of that. So what happens next? What should our listeners be watching out for, especially with the election so close? Well, keep an eye on those legal cases against Trump. Watch the evidence they present, what both sides are saying, and any decisions the courts make. And watch out for all the spin and misinformation that's sure to come out. Oh, absolutely. We're already seeing people trying to say these investigations are just political attacks. And that's only going to get worse as the election gets closer. It's more important than ever to be careful about what you read and see and to find sources you can trust. We almost need to become like legal experts oh, just yeah. to keep up with it all. I like that legal literacy. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. We need to understand the basics of how our justice system works, what's at stake. It's all about being able to have informed conversations and make good decisions. I think this deep dive has been a lot to take in. We've talked about the consequences if Trump fires Jack Smith, all the legal and political twists and turns, and we've really had to face some tough questions about justice, accountability, and what all this means for our democracy. It's been a lot. We've looked at arguments from both sides, pointed out potential conflicts of interest, and stressed how important it is to have a fair judicial system, one that's free from outside pressure. And it's clear that this story is far from over. What happens next is going to have a big impact on all of us. What are your final thoughts for our listeners as they try to understand what's going on? I'd say the most important thing is to stay informed, stay engaged, and stay vigilant. Yeah. This isn't something you can just sit back and watch. Democracy takes work. We all need to hold our leaders accountable, demand transparency, and protect the systems that protect our rights and freedoms. Well said. It's a good reminder that we all have a part to play in how this country moves forward. The future of our democracy might depend on it. That's a powerful thought. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We hope you come away with a better understanding of what we're facing and why it's so important to keep asking questions and having these tough conversations. Until next time, keep learning, keep thinking, and keep talking about these issues. Absolutely.